Welcome to our review on monitoring biodiversity. Now, obviously, we've talked about biodiversity over the past few videos and its importance and what could affect it and how we're trying to actually prevent the losses of these species. But we need to know how we can actually keep track of them to then know which ones we actually need to worry about. So the way that this happens is that scientists are regularly taking samples of plants and animals from a habitat in order to monitor the type and number of them present. And one of the key types of organisms that we're looking for are ones we refer to as indicator species. An indicator species is an organism that can be used to measure the environmental quality. And the way they do that is either by being present or by being absent. And there's some good examples at the bottom there. In the middle, we actually have the canary. Now, this was used going back quite a few years when mining was a very important thing. And what the actual miners did was they took a canary in a cage into the mines with them. And this wasn't because they just really wanted a canary to sing to them as they were working or they wanted a little friend down there. It was because the canary is a lot more sensitive to the poisonous gases that can build up in mines than humans were. So basically, when they were down in the mines working away, then they keep an eye on the canary. If the canary fell off its perch, then that meant they got out of the mine because the gases were building up. So sadly, the canaries died. We didn't. On the left hand side and the right hand side, we've got two of perhaps my favourite creatures called nudie branches. And these are fantastic indicators for climate change. So the first kind of pollution that we encounter is air pollution. Now, one of the main causes is sulphur dioxide. And this is going to come from combustion of certain fossil fuels that contain sulphur compounds. When that sulphur dioxide goes up into the atmosphere, it's going to dissolve in the clouds there to form acid rain. And when that acid rain falls, it can actually result in the death of both fish and trees. So when we want to monitor air pollution, we have a key indicator species here called lichens. Now, these are excellent for indicating the levels of air pollution. Because they've got no root systems, all of their nutrition comes from the air. So what we find is, depending on what lichens are present, then we can identify the levels of air pollution. So what we find is we do have some lichens that are brilliant at coping with pollution and therefore we find them in industrial areas or polluted areas and others where they will only grow in areas with clean air where even small amounts of pollution kill them off. And I've given you some pictures of different lichens at the bottom there. On the far left, the ones that are far more delicate looking, those are the ones that will be found in the clean air areas, whereas on the far right, the very crusty, hard looking ones, these are the ones that tend to be found in the more polluted areas. Second key area of pollution we need to consider is water pollution. Now, when we're talking about water pollution, this is generally caused by the release of some kind of harmful substance into a body of water, whether it be a lake, a river or the sea. What we tend to find as a result of this is that the higher the pollution level, the lower the level of dissolved oxygen. And that means there'll be fewer organisms able to survive in that condition. So again, we can use indicator species to give an idea of the amount of dissolved oxygen present within the water and therefore the amount of pollution within that water. So there are four key groups of indicator species for our water pollution. So if the water is unpolluted, then we find our mayfly larva or the little nymphs. In low levels of pollution, we'll find freshwater shrimp. High levels of pollution, we find the water louse. And finally, in the very high levels of pollution, we find the sludge worm. So if you want, you can think about this in terms of their little names to give you a bit of a hint. So sludge worm, sludgy, lots of pollution. OK, something that's a louse generally is associated with dirty things. So again, high pollution there. And then the mayfly is in the nice clean water on the bottom left there. And then our freshwater shrimp on the second one in from the left in low levels of pollution. So if we get a sample of water and find lots of mayfly larva and a few freshwater shrimp, we can say that that is very unpolluted water. Whereas if we were to get a sample of water filled with sludge worms, we know we've got a pollution problem in that area. 
Hopefully at the end of this video you can now describe what an indicator species actually is and also how we can use the distribution of organisms to monitor both air and water pollution levels.